So this is a topic I was thinking of because I just bought some new shelving for my CD collection and I spent yesterday setting the shelves up and moving all the CDs. And for the last six years or so, I've been keeping about 1,600 CDs on this homemade structure that's just kind of boards piled on top of cinder blocks, right? And I thought it had a certain charm to it, uh, but I do live in an earthquake zone wasn't really safe, so I did know for a while that I needed to transfer it into something more stable. But that made me think about the question, why am I bothering, right? The collection is obviously not necessary for me to listen to the music. It takes up a lot of space. It's a hell of an inconvenience, right? It's a pain in the ass to keep it organized. Every time I move, I have to tote around 200 or so pounds of dead media. And so I wanted to take this as an opportunity to think about why I've retained this thing, what it means to me, and see if that resonates with anybody else. So I should say, first of all, my name's Hans Berger. I release music through the project Electric Brain, Electric Shadow. Uh, if you're a fan of thoughtful, moody, complex, but accessible songs, I really think you should check us out. Uh, particularly our concept album, The Golem, which is smart, it's dense, it's surreal, has some elements of progressive rock on fucking chair. Our stuff's available on all the usual streaming platforms, but you can also buy our albums on CD through Bandcamp. I am compulsively driven to make CD copies. I don't feel like the album is finished until I can hold a hard copy. I don't have the budget or the resources for vinyl, so it is CD. And I, I keep printing them, even though, frankly, they're not hot sellers. There's a bunch of them in the garage, right? So at some point in the last 15 years, something's happened where CD collecting has kind of become exclusively the domain of a minority of really hardcore music fans. Uh, lots of people, I think, might keep some vinyl around who aren't really that into music. Maybe because they got it from their parents, or maybe they went through a little vinyl phase a few years ago. Maybe they think it makes them seem cultured or interesting or whatever, right? Nobody keeps a CD collection to impress anybody. I can't think of anything less cool right now, uh, or anything that has like less cultural cachet. It's not something you would do, I think, for any reason beyond just wanting to own a bunch of CDs. And I should clarify here that I don't buy all the music I listen to on CD. I'm not a monk, you know, I, I, I have a Spotify account, I buy MP3s through Bandcamp if I want to support the artist, but I don't really have room for a physical copy. Uh, there's so much music in the world right now that it isn't really feasible to keep it all around physically uh, if you want to listen to enough to be able to keep up and talk to people and, and feel like you're participating in the conversation. So with those caveats out of the way, I'm going to go through the reasons I've come up with. I'm going to do that in increasing order of importance, right? So I'm not going to blow all the good stuff at the beginning. You have something to stick around for. So the first reason really is just that some of these things are valuable, and I don't have a really good sense of which ones are valuable. Sometimes things get reissued, sometimes things might have a little moment of rediscovery where they come back into the conversation. Some things might be really valuable to the right person, but good luck finding that person, whatever, right? But I do know that there's a decent number of things there that aren't readily available for under 30 or 40 bucks, right? So if I wanted to liquidate the collection, I'm in this position where uh, there's enough reasonably valuable stuff in there that it would be a waste to just dump the whole thing at goodwill, right? But there's not really enough value to it that uh, it would actually be worth the effort to identify which ones are out of print or rare at the moment, figure out the best way to actually get value for those. Now, I don't want to liquidate, right? And I'd feel terrible if I did. But if for some reason I started to drift in that direction, uh, just the knowledge of how hard it would be to actually get a reasonable value out of it compared to the value that, fuck. Mm -hmm. 
Now the next thing, uh, and this is another minor thing, but I think, you know, all the minor reasons add up eventually, is CDs are a really good way to listen to music in the car, right? You're starting to see newer cars without CD players in the last few years, which I think is a travesty and probably will be the thing that keeps me from ever buying a brand new car, right? But most cars I would realistically own still have a CD player. And in every car I've ever had that has a CD player and an aux jack, the sound through the CD player is better than the sound through the aux jack. Uh, I also live somewhere that a lot of the time when I'm driving, my internet connection cuts in and out. So I don't always have a reliable internet connection if I wanted to be streaming in the car. And, you know, logistics aside, sound quality aside, I just think that... A CD in the car is a good opportunity to practice your attention span, right? You're not playlisting. You can't jump around too much from song to song or album to album. You have some CDs that you brought. Once you start one, you're probably going to finish it, right? So the car is a good place to touch back on songs that I tend to skip on albums that I like or albums I don't tend to think about as much in the catalogs of artists I love. So because the CD in the car lends itself to that kind of more sustained listening, it encourages me to go back to things I might not otherwise. And that ties somewhat to my next point, which is that buying a CD is a way of committing to an album. You know, we have a media environment right now that encourages listening in breadth over listening in depth. And that's probably how things are going to be until civilization collapses. That mode of consumption is not, I think, going to go away without some catastrophe, at least. Uh, and that's beneficial in certain ways, right? There are tons of things I've heard that I would not have heard if we still had the media environment of, let's say, 1998. Now, I don't know if the instant availability of everything has made me happier or made me smarter or made me a better person or made me a better musician. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's done none of that. <clears throat> but I have to admit that I do have at least a passing familiarity with a really big chunk of music. But uh, when I buy a hard copy of an album, when I have it sitting there on my desk, uh, when I have it on a shelf and I see it every time I'm dusting, my brain is set up, so I'm going to prioritize that. I'm going to give it a few more shots if it doesn't resonate right away. I'm going to come back and reappraise it if I haven't heard it in a few years. And in general, I think that committing to physical music is a way of prompting yourself to spend time with something that might require more attention, right? It's a way of not just picking and choosing whatever's going to immediately juice your pleasure centers. And obviously that commitment is there with vinyl, too. Uh, but a really nice vinyl copy of something is expensive enough that, you know, I'm reluctant to buy something on vinyl unless I'm already very confident that I'm going to like it or unless I'm familiar with that music. And, you know, there's so much limitation on where and when you can listen to a record that, um, you know, I personally have a bunch of vinyl I've never actually listened to, embarrassingly enough. So I really, in light of that fact, cannot say that getting an album on vinyl is a reliable way for me to get familiar with it or commit to getting to know it. And, you know, when I first got a Spotify account, which I had resisted doing, honestly, until I started trying to promote my own music, right? And I thought, okay, you know, I need to have a better understanding of the marketplace that other people are going to be consuming this stuff in and encountering this stuff in, right? So I haven't honestly been listening to Spotify that long. But when I did first get a Spotify account, it struck me how much it's trying to, consciously or not, erode the album as an art form and detach things from the album context, right? Spotify doesn't recommend me albums. It recommends me artists. It recommends me playlists. It recommends me podcasts. It doesn't ever put a lot of effort into getting me to think about music in an album format. 
And if you look at the stats for a medium tier artist, there's always a couple of songs that have a much greater number of plays than everything else, right? And you know that they got those stats from being on some highly trafficked playlist. And the presence of that song on that playlist doesn't seem to have necessarily um, goosed the stats for the rest of the album. Now, granted, you know, radio also had the effect of defining an artist by two or three songs. Radio had the effect of, you know, creating artists who are mostly known in the popular imagination by uh, one or two or three songs. But Spotify is having the effect of replacing a full music collection, replacing the encounter with an album in a way that radio never did. The album, I think, frankly, is vestigial as a cultural unit in the era of streaming, right? And I suspect that the next couple generations of music listeners who never had the experience of living in a world where physical media was the assumed default, I think the next couple generations are going to be much less conscious of the album as a cultural unit than we have been. And I don't like that, frankly, you know, and maybe I'll interrogate that bias some other time, but um, it doesn't make me very happy. So then the last thing here is maybe the least rational, maybe the least explicable to somebody who's anybody but me. Um, but I think it's also the most bedrock one. And, you know, you could sweep the others away and this would still remain. So I have a friend who went through Jungian analysis. And one concept that he told me about was what he called the continuity of self, right? Which basically means reassuring yourself that you are one continuous person. That the identity that you had in the past and that you have now and that you have in the future are all uh, that they connect to each other in some, in some continuous way and are a unified uh, entity, which is an illusion, right? Probably is not literally true, but it's an illusion that it's very important to our sanity and well-being to be able to maintain. And for me, this, I'm pointing at the giant CD rack, I may cut to it in the editing, this is that, right? There are things in here that go back 20 odd years. Uh, there are things that have been there a week. And frankly, the pace of accrual has slowed down, but there are things in there that I encountered in every phase of my life and that I gathered in every phase of my life and that tie me to every phase of my life. And ultimately that is a reassurance that in some way I continue to be me. Um, I think I've become a lot more consciously aware of that function of it lately, right? It was serving that function in an unconscious way for years. I've become more consciously aware of that function. I'd even say there are probably some things that I let go of over the years uh, that maybe I don't love now as music, but I wish I had held on to for exactly that reason. But, oh well, lesson learned there, I guess. So... Maybe this is an anchor, ultimately, in a material or a psychic sense. You know, maybe my house is going to burn down one day and all these will be gone and I'll discover that that's actually liberating. But I think I would feel unlike myself in some deep way. I'd feel like I was cutting off the self I was in my teens and my 20s. Anyway, those are my reasons. Do you still keep a CD collection? If so, why? Did any of these resonate with you? Uh, if so, comment below. Check out Electric Brain, Electric Shadow on Bandcamp, Spotify, wherever the hell else you get your stuff.